This is the Alien Gear Rapid Force Duty Holster, potentially the best duty holster you can buy in 2023. So this review has actually been a long time coming. In fact, it's been delayed twice now. Uh, the first delay, not so good for reasons. The second delay was actually for a very good reason. So the first delay occurred uh, about four or five months ago. I was just doing some dry fire one day. Um, actually, I was going to shoot the video the next day. And all of a sudden, I'm dry firing, drawing from the holster, and my level 2 retention stopped working. I was able to actually fully uh, and freely pull the gun from the holster without deactivating the level 2 retention right here. Now this is a new holster, uh, it does not have that issue, but that just happened randomly all of a sudden and looking inside the holster, the um, ejection port lock for the Glock had been completely sheared off and was no longer locking onto the gun. Now in less than 24 hours, Alien Gear not only contacted me, but they said straight up, we're gonna send you a new holster for free. And this was not because I make YouTube videos or anything like that, I was just a customer and they were ready to take care of me and uh, that is customer service. So that's something great right off the bat. Now, like I said, it's not great that it broke, but the level three retention was still functional. So let's say you're in a, a struggle, in a duty situation or what have you, uh, you're still gonna have your level three retention. And like I said, Alien Gear is gonna hook you up and get your replacement ASAP. So while it wasn't nice that it broke, in fact, the way I broke it, they said they've never seen that way before. They've never seen it break like that. However, I got a replacement very quickly and ultimately things break. I put a ton of reps through that holster and I'm gonna continue to put a ton of reps through this holster, but I still trust this holster and I would trust my life to this holster in a duty situation 100%. Now, like I said, that first delay was not a good reason, but the second delay was well worth it. So I was getting ready about a month ago to put the review out finally, and then Alien Gear dropped a new product. What is that? Well, this guy right here. And you're like, what are you talking about? What I'm talking about is the fact that I have a QLS uh, quick disconnect system from Safari Land on the Alien Gear holster. And if you're unaware, that was not possible uh, for its first couple years out on the market. Uh, what you had to use was one of Alien Gear's quick disconnect systems, which to be fair, isn't bad. It has a little, um, these uh, pieces you press right here and the holster will come disconnected and it locks in place very well. And it even has an adjustable cant and it's uh, a bolt on system. So you don't have to take everything off your belt to mount this on and off. So it's a pretty great system. But for someone like myself who has a ton of Safari Land patterned uh, QLS holsters, having to run a specific belt just to run the Alien Gear was definitely a pain. So the fact that this product came out, I was like, wait a minute, I gotta buy it, I gotta try it, and then change my review. Because I'm gonna be honest, one of my biggest cons with the holster was aftermarket, right? I can't put this holster on anything but Alien Gear's belt systems, right? Which, not that they're bad, but if I have other uh, solutions on the market, like this uh, T-Rex Arms Ragnarok, I have to run a QLS here. So therefore, I'm stuck with running Alien Gear, uh, the Alien Gear holster, they only really make one holster with a quick disconnect system. They now have a level two one as well, uh, like, a, like a concealed carry or like a off duty carry level two, but it's still just a, you know, Alien Gear holster. That's all I can use. Versus now with this adapter, I can run it on a QLS patterned um, receiver. And I can put everything like a T-Rex Arms Ragnarok or any other holster on the market that uses the QLS fork. So the fact that they released this brings this holster from where it was sitting for me, maybe about a seven or eight to easily a nine, where I now have full aftermarket compatibility with Safari Land accessories when it comes to mounting this on Safari Land QLS patterned or Safari Land three hole patterned uh, mounts. Now, something you may notice on here is this tourniquet mount here. Um, a lot of people have been using like straps or Velcro or something to mount a tourniquet, but I've been able to successfully mount this tourniquet holder here, uh, especially now using the Safari Land three hole pattern. Um, this is the holster accessory mount from Black Box Customs. I don't have all three holes mounted in here. I just have the top two, but I mean, I, it holds very well. I don't have any issues there. It locks in in those top two holes. It just can't reach because of the design of the holster, but it holds this 1110 tourniquet mount very well, holds my cat holst, uh, tourniquet there. So that way, when it comes to space efficiency on a duty, battle, range belt, whatever, I can have a tourniquet mounted right in the front of this holster. Now let's cover the most important thing though, the draw. What makes this holster so good? Well, it's the draw process. It is so intuitive, uh, so fast, so much faster and consistent than a Safari Land holster. And I've been running Safari Lands for like four years now. 
right? Running their level three and level two holsters. And I have swapped and made the conversion to the alien gear and for good reason. And like I said, it's that speed. I can be so much faster with the Alien Gear holster than the Safari Land, and so much more consistent. Um, and it's just a faster holster, a more consistent holster. Now, how does the draw work? Well, it starts with putting your hand on the gun like any other holster, and then I simply have to drive down to disable the level three hood. And then I simply pull back just a bit, and I've got my gun. My gun is in my hand, ready to deploy, ready to be used. I don't have to push forward like on a Safari Land, and then pull back. I simply go down, drive on the gun, and I can grab it. And if the way I have it configured, which by the way, you can change the height of this button and the height of this lever, the way I have it configured, I can actually do both at the same time and pull the gun out of the holster. So I can draw a lot faster, but it's not like some other holsters on the market where it's a literally one button release for two levels of retention. No, you still have a button and a release like this, similar to a Safari Land. However, if you're fast and you know how to do it, you can kind of release both of them at once. And that way, give yourself a faster, more consistent draw than something like a Safari Land holster. Now, you do have this guard right here in the front. Um, so it, if someone wants to take your holster or take your gun from you from the front, you do have a little bit of a guard. I do wish it was more like a Safari Land where it fully encompassed these buttons. And maybe someone will come out with a product or an adapter, or maybe Alien Gear will. And that's really my biggest complaint is I would like more security. But even trying, uh, having you know my friends try and grab the gun from me and everything, I can still defend it very well, keep someone from taking the gun out of the holster. But if that is a concern of yours, you know, there is, you might want to go Safari Land, but as long as you're comfortable with being able to defend your gun with retention like this, uh, then I think it's good to go when it comes to your level three retention. Now, one cool feature about the holster that a lot of people may not know about is when it comes to the hood. Now, something that can happen and a complaint people have had is the hood can get pushed back up when you uh, have your gun unholstered, right? You could be moving around, let's say law enforcement, military, you know, even as a citizen, you could have your thing down and the hood comes back up because you get pushed up against the wall or a building or what have you because it doesn't have a whole lot of resistance. It has some, but not as much as like a Safari Land does. So if this closes and you go to reholster, now all of a sudden you can't get your gun in the holster. Well, Alien Gear thought of that. If you're running a light bearing holster or even non light bearing, right? If this is a non light bearing variant, you can take your gun, the muzzle of your gun or your light and push down on that level three retention button and get back in the holster, right? Same thing with this X300. I've got the holster closed and I can come down, drop it down and put it in the holster. So even if my hood gets pushed back up, I can reholster it versus a Safari Land where while it's harder for the hood to get pushed back up, if it does get pushed back up, you're gonna have a lot harder time getting that gun back in the holster. Now, another great thing about the holster is the pass-through. I've got a pass-through here for my muzzle and for my light. So dirt, rocks, dust, debris, and nothing's in a gather in here, water, anything like that. Um, the newest th series from Safari Land, the 7000 series, I know they just released their vault or whatever, but on the market currently is the newest thing is the 7000 series. It's completely closed off here. So you're basically screwed. Either you have to cut holes or you're gonna get full of water and dirt and debris and stuff inside of it. The 6000 series, you can actually pop out both the blocks, but the 7000 series, Safari Land's newest, latest and greatest holsters that they've got for sale currently. Uh, you're kind of shit out of luck if stuff gets in your holster. You'll have to kind of either take it off of your QLS if you're using a QLS and dump it out, or you're gonna have to hop up and down until stuff gets out. Um, if you ever had that situation, you can get like a spare brass in your mag carrier or something like that. So definitely not great on the Safari Lands part, but on Alien Gear, total pass through, so no dirt or debris is gonna build up in this holster, and it's gonna be just fine when you go to reholster the gun. Now, one more potential concern with the holster I do have, um, something I think is pretty minor because most holsters on the market that are light bearing do have this issue. But if I come in and I torque the gun just right, I can reach my finger in here and press the trigger. Um, it's pretty difficult to do so, but it's not impossible. And so ultimately, uh, that is something to be concerned about, is the ability to come in here and press that trigger. Um, is it a giant concern? I don't think so. You really have to get in there to do so, but it is possible. Um, if you have a stock clock trigger, it's a little harder. If you have like an aftermarket trigger, it's even easier to do so. But like I said, I don't think it's a huge issue. It just is something to, to be aware of. Uh, you can tighten your retention down more. Obviously, it's a balance. If you have the retention really tight, it'll be harder to draw. But there's a screw right here. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's right here where you can tighten the retention and there's a lot uh, range of adjustability. So that way there's less wiggle. So there's less chance of that happening. But someone with skinny fingers or small hands could possibly get in there while you're struggling with a firearm in let's say a duty capacity or something and possibly discharge it. But like I said, I don't think it's a huge concern. Um, ultimately, I don't think it's very likely to happen. And most light bearing holsters, even Safari Lands, do suffer from this flaw. Now, if you guys can't tell from watching the video, I am wholeheartedly behind this holster. I really enjoy it and I really like it. And it's become my go-to retention holster. Not only is it fast, 
but it, Alien Gear has great customer service and a so much easier ordering process than Safari Line. If you've ever ordered a holster directly from Safari Line, it is the most confusing thing ever. Versus Alien Gear, you just select your gun, you select what hand you are, you select what level of retention you want, whether you got a light or not, and then you select what accessories you want, like a belt ride, quick disconnect, stuff like that. Um, whether you want an optic hood, but it's so simple versus Safari Land where it is the most uh, headache inducing process ever to try and figure out that order. So not only is it easier on the customer and they have a really good customer service, which Safari Land does have good customer service to be fair, but it's just an amazing product which makes you faster and more consistent with a duty holster while sti still giving you that level of retention and security that you'd get out of what used to be the go-to holster for me, the Safari Land Level 3. So one caveat I will say, if you're going to use this or the Safari Land, pick one and stick with it. Um, I ran the Safari Land for years and it took me a little bit of time to get fast with the Alien gear. And recently, just a couple months ago, I started running the Alien, the, excuse me, the Safari Land again, just to get some good comparison, some comparison video, and just personal comparison ideas so I could actually speak about the Safari Land versus the Alien gear since it'd been so long since I'd ran a Safari Land holster. And something I ran into is it slowed me down on both the Safari Land and on the Alien gear when I kept on swapping back and forth. So if you're gonna use one, whether it's the Alien gear or the Safari Land, run it and stick to it. Do not keep swapping between the two because it ultimately will slow you down. Pick one, run it, learn it, become super proficient with it, but don't uh, go back and forth like I did, right? That was just for review processes, but for true serious use, just stick to one. Whichever one you prefer, if you really love Safari Land, you hate Alien Gear, or if you really like uh, CompTAC or any of the other companies that make duty holsters, just find a good one and stick with it at the end of the day because you don't wanna be stuck uh, with your muscle memory used to one holster and you know your instinct to draw one way and then you try and draw another holster and you draw it the wrong way because you're so used to Safari Land's draw when you're trying to draw from the alien gear in a true life or death situation. If this video is useful to you in determining whether or not you want to purchase an alien gear holster or if you just enjoyed watching the video, go ahead and leave a like down below. If you don't like me or don't like alien gear, because to be fair I didn't like any of their concealment holsters, this is the only product they've made that I actually like, go ahead, feel free to leave a dislike down below. It's there for a reason. Otherwise, guys, head into the comments. Tell me your experience with Alien Gear, with the Rapid Force, why you prefer Alien Gear, why you prefer Sapphire Land, why you prefer Blade Tech, what have you. I wanna know about those things. I'd love to hear your experiences. Otherwise, guys, I'm releasing new videos every Saturday. Subscribe and stay tuned.